Coors Light, and Ruby Tuesday Hawaii. And brought to you by HGEA, Hawaiian Financial Federal Credit Union, and IBEW Local 1186. And welcome to this Monday edition of Call the Coach. And by the way, this is our penultimate edition. I just want to tell everybody now that next Monday, we will do this live from Ruby Tuesday, I'm happy to report. So this is the last of our remote Call the Coaches. I'm with I'm Bobby Cohen along with Iran Gannat. And, uh, you know, I think normally you would say, well, you split on the road. It's not a It's not a nightmare. I think the issue, though, is that the game, the win against UC San Diego doesn't count in the conference standings because they're a set year two of a four-year transition. And I think that I consider right now probably Irvine as much as a rival as anybody. And after you pounded them at home, uh, you guys took it on the chin this past Saturday. So it's never pleasant. I don't know if you would agree with this. I mean, some guys would say, oh, man, I just I just wanted to be right in that. If, you know, you lose it, the buzzer, you lose it. I, in some ways, I think it's easier to get over it when it's not that close. You can sort of say, okay, wasn't our night. Let's watch it. We'll learn, and we'll move on. I, I don't toss and turn over the what ifs if you lose by, you know, 20 plus. Well, for me more, it's uh, about how we perform and things like that. And are, are we close and did we make, miss some shots? And, you know, we've, for over the seven years, you know, we haven't had been 20 plus many times, I think three or four going into that game in seven years. So uh, I think our team battles and has a chance to win every game. And we didn't have a chance, obviously, in the second half. Uh, we took a hit early the way the game started. I thought we did a nearly nice job. Obviously missing some good looks, but we defended for that stretch. I think it was 24-20. We missed a layup. We missed a front end. We missed some open looks. But we didn't close the half well, and they had momentum to end the half, and they controlled all of the second half. So that part's disappointed. I don't think we're very good at any facets in that game. You know, we've rarely been out-rebounded, and all of a sudden get out-rebounded by double digits, yeah. after, which is, again, they're a good rebounding team, but so are we. Um, obviously some game, and we don't live and die by the three. We didn't shoot well. We, we lost the game because we didn't shoot well and we didn't guard and we didn't rebound and we didn't take the hit well. Um, and obviously we lost Noel for a stretch and then Junior had the foul trouble that compounded things. But we've been without guys before and our expectation is to compete regardless. And for the first time in a while, I thought uh, they outcompeted us uh, from, for the game. And, you know, you, you go now saying that, just like you said, you, you come back to work. Um, Approach the week same way, and you know we had a really good win against UC San Diego. Who's playing well, a good program, and you know we saw that team without three guys. They had all their guys. They had just come off a twenty-point win against UC Riverside. So uh, you know with the Fullerton win and UC San Diego, certainly thought we were moving in a good direction and had an opportunity to play a big game against a good team on their court in Irvine. And didn't get done. Uh, so back to work we go, and I'm looking forward to maximizing all the time we have with this group. Well, and I think the two games you have this week are teams that you managed to defeat on the road, both of them. Cal Poly you got on Thursday. That was your second game in the last one. The first one was against Bakersfield. I thought Bakersfield, I mean, they're kind of a throwback team. I mean, they play as old school physical. It's like basketball in the late 90s or something. I mean, they're pushing and shoving. And I thought your guys – you know, reacted pretty well to that and came back and won a hard-fought game at Bakersfield. At their place, and it's a team that's been really, really well-coached. They have a clear identity. Um, they're healthy coming into our game. They probably lost more. I know there's a lot of close games for a lot of teams in league play. I would say they probably lost more close games than anybody in the country in league play. So I know they feel like they're close and they're physical and they're inside out and they can press and they can play pressure basketball at several positions. And they're used to winning. I mean, they went to the tournament. They went to the NIT. Um, again, and their coach has been there and knows what, you know, has a clear identity for their program. Both those games were battles. Cal Poly was close at the half. We had a great second half. Just like we did against uh, Bakersfield, we had a great second half. But, you know, every game's a battle. You know, at this time, yes, you're fighting for seeding, but you're also fighting for momentum going into league play as they are. And I know they have a lot of confidence coming in. Uh, Cal Poly's added the Stevenson kid who didn't play in our game. And Bakersfield's had close losses. So 
expecting uh, another good set of battles this week. Well, I think this is going to be a fun thing because the University of Hawaii is now, there's no restrictions. People can come in. The best crowd of the season was the last Saturday game against Cal State Fullerton. Come one, come all. Everybody welcome. Yeah, and each game, obviously, with the restrictions slowly ease and people getting more into the rhythm of things. This has been a great group to root for. I think people have enjoyed their time uh, supporting this group, and they're easy to root for, obviously, but they've been exciting as well. They've been some great games, um, and, and the, the crowds have really been a factor. Uh, I know we also have senior night on Saturday, but, you know, we didn't get to play our two home games to start league. They were canceled with the protocols and things like that, so... We've got to maximize the home games we have. We, what, what I've said a couple of weeks ago, with the ease of restrictions everywhere, it's been great to play in front of these fan bases. And we only get two more. We've got to return the favor and have our crowd rocking uh, for our group. We need it, especially coming off a lot like we came off a loss against uh, Long Beach, a tough, close game. And the crowd stepped up, and we had a better crowd on Saturday. And certainly it's, it's fun for the crowd. It's fun for our guys. It's what it's all about. And we're looking forward to setting off our seniors the right way. Well, and one of the things is, I mean, it's funny because you have seniors. Three of them will participate in the ceremony. All three of them are technically eligible to come back next year, or we're two of the three definitely, and we're assuming that DeRosier, if you can believe Jay Billis, he said it's an absolute certainty. He said it's a moral imperative that the Ivy League players get the season back. I'm, I'm going with Jay on that one. <laughs> well, you know, I, I talked to a lot of coaches in the country, and we're going to have a couple more years of these COVID year guys. Everyone thinks last year was the seniors, but every person got an extra year, and every case is different in terms of how many years they're at. I mean, Mate spent five years here. He's got his, he's earning his degree. Junior, what a great story. He's earning his degree. We got a couple ex, an extra year from him um, than we had thought initially. And then Jerome. Uh, is hopeful to have that. He wants to come back, and but he's only had it a year with us. So um, I think he's really enjoyed his time. All those guys have enjoyed their time. Uh, we really appreciate that. I think the, right now it looks like Junior and Monty are going to move on, and Jerome would like to come back. He's waiting on the process. But like you said, there is a movement there. Remember, he's part of an Ivy League group that never had the option to opt out. He just wasn't allowed to play last year. So I know he wants to come back, and we'd love to have him back. Well, and I just think the fact he has a girlfriend who loves it here, she's coming back to school whether or not uh, Jerome. So he may be around even if he wasn't eligible, but I think he will be. And, man, you know, because Junior, I get the Junior thing. He's been here a long time. He wants to go earn some money playing in the pro league in Australia, I presume, is where he's headed. And, and that's, that's fabulous. I also think that Jerome might be more critical – for you guys to have back just because he's been, I think the surprise of the season. I mean, everybody yeah. said, well, he's a solid player. I think he's been actually a little bit better than that. Absolutely. I think to call him a role player uh, is an understatement. He's certainly on the cusp of an all conference type player for all he does in so many different areas and his consistency. And, you know, this is uh, what a impactful first year he's had. And now those guys are starting to see the power of the crowd and normalcy. And, Hey, this is a pretty good deal. But everybody's in different situations, and whatever they decide, we have always been very supportive of. We'd love to have them all back. You know, Junior, what an unbelievable story. What an inspiration. And to, to earn his degree, uh, to go through all the things he's gone through in his career, I still think he's a late groomer. He's uh, got a bright future. I think he's got several other levels to go to. Um, but, you know, he came over, he went to a prep school, he went to junior college, and then he didn't get that first year with us. He came at semester, redshirted, has – had the two the two extra years with us. So, um, again, we've had great discussions with those guys. I'm going to enjoy every second I can to coach. And Mate obviously also had that year. He came at semester as well. So he's been here quite a bit. And he has obviously an AFL contract uh, for him uh, already. And, uh, and, and then in Jerome's case, he's had just the year – here and, and I think he can get better. I think this is the he didn't get to play last year, and I can see what a big jump, and I can see growth with him as good as he's been. Well, Justin's asking the question on Facebook here: What can you say about the wonderful seniors and their success? And you've already started to really talk about that. I, I think each one of the three have been terrific uh, contributors this year. Awesome. I mean, and, and they've had to go through a lot of adversity. 
Um, I said to our guys a little bit, I'm going to talk about them early in the week so I don't get emotional uh, end of the week because, and I try to keep calm, but we have a lot of love for these guys and what they've been through uh, is incredible. I mean, I could get, I got I always got to make sure I get back to a place of feeling very blessed and fortunate to do what we do with these student athletes, what they've gone through this year over the past couple of years, um, junior story from, from, you know, growing up in Sudan to finding a spot in, at DME in the East coast to junior college for a couple of years. to we just randomly watch them at Hutch and kind of look around going, who's that guy? I mean, we've had a lot of these under the radar guys that become all conference type players, such a great worker. I think he's the first male in his family to earn his degrees on pace to do that. Um, that's incredible and so proud of him and so thankful for him. And, and obviously Mate coming in. Mate had a breakthrough last year. He was on the cusp of another breakthrough this year, and he had a six-week delay, and he's still trying to find his rhythm. But I'm so happy to just see him out there from where he was during those six weeks. And can't thank him enough. And that's the, at the end of the day, the gratitude and the appreciation and the thanks. You can't say enough about who they are on the court, off the court, in the classroom, and the type of teammates they, have, they are, have been and the, how proud they are to represent Hawaii. They're, this is a home for them for life. You tell me if I'm wrong, but I have a feeling all three of those guys could be significant to the outcome of the conference tournament for you guys. No, absolutely. Um, you know, you need everybody down the stretch, and each of them, you just said, I mean, Junior's been a player of the week. Uh, you know, Mate had, during that stretch, and Bernardo was down, was down, he was incredible. And six weeks is a long time to miss when you're going through – the recovery from something I've said when he went through it, everybody handles that in different ways. Every person's individual body is different. And so he's gaining his weight back. He's getting his rhythm back. I think there's, he's got something deep down in him for this final stretch. And I believe that with him and all our guys and certainly Jerome has been up for player of the week several times. So I'd say it's pretty clear that those guys have been impactful. I want to get the, for this from you. And it's a text from yeah. someone that says coach justice. Jackson got playing time on Saturday. It was great. Despite the situation, will he be given more time this season? Yeah. You know, it's unfortunate. You know, sometimes those situations, that was a great opportunity for him to get some more game reps. I mean, we talk a lot about every rep you can get in practice and the court in a game, you know, maximize. I don't care what the score was, whether up or down, those are great reps for anybody, especially a young guy who's got a great future. So I think we're kind of, as we get to this stretch, uh, the limited practice we have, all all hands are on deck. And he's still getting comfortable. It's tough. When he came, uh, we, we were playing in the diamond head. Then we were had a pause. And then we were into, as you know, a Hawaii conference schedule with no buys doesn't lend itself to having many practices, uh, especially when you're trying to keep the bodies fresh and you're traveling every other week. Um, so he's had limited, not as many practices as you'd like, He's a smart kid, and we have a lot of confidence in him. You know, one of the things about him, he's got a little swag to him because, you know, some guys, when they very lightly play and they haven't had many game reps, I mean, you can sort of see it. The ball's a hot potato. He comes up like he's playing in the uh, the Rising Stars game in the NBA. He He just looks to the manner born. Yeah, and he's a strong, tough kid, and uh, he's a confident kid. I mean, that's how he walks into the, any room every day, by the way. Like, and yeah. he gets some jabs for that, but he's got a, a confidence about him. I, I said it's about a comfort in terms of the system and all that. It's not about a confidence, which is great, because I think that's really important when you recruit guys. Is he a believer? Is he believe in himself? Does he, and does he have confidence? Does he hang his head? No, I don't think he does, and I think the other stuff, will just continue to add to his game. Now, the, here's another question. It's about justice. Does his lack of playing time this year, does that mean he gets an extra year of eligibility? Ability? Like, is he sort of a red shirt? No. I mean, he, he whatever reps, and that was very communicated to him uh, prior, um, especially with the situation at the time where we were limited bodies. So he's been huge for us in practice. He's been huge for us in, in the couple, couple of the games that we needed to throw him in the fire. And he needs to stay ready. Uh, but certainly, I would, <laughs> we'll, we'll ask. We'll try to get him the next year. Right. We'll keep fighting. So, But it's uh, probably but, unlikely. Is that fair? Yeah. You know, there's a um, – but I, it's – everything's been very um, collaborative and very transparent. And, and um, like I said, we've, we've enjoyed working with him. I'm looking forward to seeing him grow and having an offseason with us and 
you know, he's now acclimated to the state of Hawaii, you know, the academic situation has been on the road with us. I think that will serve him well moving forward. And he's been practicing and going against, you know, good players. We got another text that I want to get to. It's, it's not one you're going to love, but I mean, it's, it's the fact of the matter on turnovers. We'll get to that next. We're going to take a quick time out. This is called The Coach on ESPN Honolulu. Hi, this is Rick from Ruby Tuesday, Hawaii. Come in this month and order any local dish and get the second one for half price. If you haven't tried our hamburger steak plate with two patties, please come in. I think it's the best in town. Wash them down with a Miller Coors Light for only $3.69 or order the award-winning Blue Moon for $4.69. Thanks. See you soon and make every day a Ruby Tuesday. Some people think of public workers as statistics, numbers, positions that are unnecessary. But public workers include police dispatchers, lifeguards, principals, and other school workers like safety and security specialists and educational assistants, public health nurses, and thousands more real people who play important roles that every community needs. So those public workers, we shouldn't take them for granted. They provide essential services that benefit us all. A message from HGEA. When you feel like Vegas, there's just one place to stay. Grab a drink at the Holo Holo Bar, there's just one place to play. We got a fresh hot look, a new sports book. We got those local meals, just like Auntie Cooks. Aloha, spoken here. Get back to Vegas with Vacations Hawaii. Airfare, hotel, meals, and transfers, just $7.77. Have you been to Midas? Midas Hawaii. Hello, Tim here from Midas Hawaii, where we are more than just mufflers. We are complete auto care, rated number one in customer service. We strive to make your experience more enjoyable, whether it be for a walk-in safety check six days a week, brakes to radiators, or oil changes and steering. With six locations on Oahu, two on the Big Island, one on Kauai, our goal is to expedite your service and get you back out on the road. We also want to help you save money. For great rates, check out our webpage at MidasHawaii.com for specials, online deals, for services such as oil change, safety checks, and maintenance packages. And let's not forget about our tire services too. Midas is a one-stop shop for all your car care needs and is proud to be locally owned and operated by the Pereira family. Come in today or call us for an appointment. Remember, it always pays to have the Midas touch. You came for us, we do that. So we might as well. Here's something new from PAXA, Hawaii's premier technology provider. HPE Electra powers your data from edge to cloud. The HPE data infrastructure is AI driven, built for cloud, and delivered as a service. The solution provides fast, consistent performance and 99.9999% guaranteed availability. To learn more and to schedule a demo with PAXA, Hawaii's HPE Gold Partner, go to paxa.com slash Electra. That's paxa.com slash A L L E T R A. Call the coach on ESPN Honolulu. Welcome back uh, to our Monday edition of Call the Coach. This will be our final remote edition of the show. Next Monday, one week from tonight, we are going to be live again at Ruby Tuesday, one of my favorite spots. And I'm really looking forward to breaking bread with all of the people that come down there. They've been fabulous all year. I know you have your group that bring the meals for the players afterwards. And I know that group especially is missing the Ruby Tuesdays. Not for long. Okay, got a text. What are you telling your team about the turnovers? It's been double digits the last few games. A lot have been on force. That's not actually true. There were only eight against UC San Diego, but I understand the point. You know, I, we, uh, we've said we got to chip away that nothing happens overnight, and I've been pleased. You can see the non-conference turnovers to the conference turnovers. They're down two, I believe. Um, and then recently – you know, we turn it over eight times against UC San Diego. You can see the difference it makes for our team, one of our most complete performances. And we didn't – I think we had four or five at the half against Irvine. If anything, I think we've improved taking care of the ball. But when we turn it over, we turn it over in flurries. And I will say that in the Irvine game, we got called for way more traveling violations than we had all year. So some were um, close calls, and, and but always we watch it, we talk about it, and we move forward. It's certainly an emphasis for us in practice. It's, it, I think we're chipping away at it. 
Um, and it's going to be emphasis for us moving forward. I thought I thought the traveling call on Mate, I thought that was phantom. You guys watched it. Am I right? Did you watch it and think, mm, I don't know about that one? No, it wasn't a travel. And so, yeah. but, but we watched it and the other one was a travel. And so we go through it all and, and, and because the whole deal is we confront the brutal facts and get better. Uh, we address it, whether it's by our talk, our film, or on the floor in the practice gym. Um, and you go from there. So Here's a text, and I, I think you'll uh, be interested to answer this one because he's one of my uh, favorites. I hated seeing him in street clothes. Why wasn't Beyond Riley used against UC Irvine? Beyond Riley wasn't available for us uh, for the week. He didn't feel well, and he's good, sounds like, for this week, and, and that's where it's at. It's pretty simple at that point. Uh, yeah. The medical team and the player. Not, we coming. should just say not, it's nothing to do no. with COVID. He just. Nope. Yeah, you know, he was on. That's why if it was, he wouldn't have even been on the on the bench. bench. So yeah. um, sometimes you have those situations, as you know, it could be certain different things, but it's pretty consistent. The student athlete and the medical team let us know where they're at and we support that and move forward. And in the meantime, we work to get back as soon as we can the right way. And it sounds like Beyond is better for this week. Well, I, you know, it's funny because the game, mm-hmm. one game that I thought he really had an impact in was at Bakersfield. Yep. I mean, because they were very fast. And he has a little bit of that. You can sort of see him playing linebacker. I mean, because he's got that, he's got strength uh, and he's a clean player, but he's not afraid to stick his nose and use his body. Here's a question. Coach, do you believe Beyond Riley would have made an impact against UC Irvine to lead maybe to a closer game? Well, I think it's always best. You're, you're better. Your chances improve when you have everyone available. I think when Noel went down and Junior had the four fouls and would be on out, certainly some things were compounded or magnified. Um, so that's what I'll say. But it, it wouldn't – if it, the way we were, we played during that stretch was separate from a beyond situation. You know, let's yeah. give them credit. Let's own where we were um, – you know, where we faltered and get better. And in the meantime, let's get those other guys back as soon as we can. Here's another question. Coach, are you upset at all that the two games against UC San Diego don't count the standings? You're 2-0 and against them, but it seems unfair that you're not awarded anything as a result. You know, I, obviously, after the fact, I'll, yeah, I put the two ends <laughs> on the board and we're 9-3, and three, you know, or 9-4 and four in, in conference, and, you know, we've – yeah, had a, and they're good. Like, obviously, they're big in teams in our conference. I think they have five or six wins in our conference, something like that. So, um, ah, it's easy to say after the fact. I know it's interesting that counts for us, doesn't count on the women's side, or counts on the women's side, doesn't count on our side, but there's nothing you can do about it. Um, obviously, right after the fact, you'd like them on there, but again, it is what it is. Uh, I, I will say that I thought the guys were really prepared for that game and played well against a good team coming off a big win themselves at their place. Um, so you, for, you, it takes away from that trip because you, we split it and obviously the recent game, but you know, I, I will, I do want to take, um, and say some good things about our group for the way they play in that game. Okay. Now this is an interesting <laughs> question because I don't think this is actually possible. I mean, anything's possible. This is extremely unlikely coach. What's your take on the format this year for the tournament? Do you like that you might have to play an extra game should you end up somewhere between seven and 10. You know, I think that's inter- this year and last year, you know, is very interesting. We, you know, there's been some discrepancies that could happen over the time, but the last two years have been very unique. You know, the way they do tiebreakers and the way they do conference standings, especially when games haven't been played. You know, last year we were, we played 18 league games and Davis played 10 and they were ahead of us in the standings by the way they figured out how to do that. This Percentage, year, right. This year, it's not that, not just the games, it's the amount of home and away games that people get. Like Long Beach will end up, I believe, with nine home games and six road games. And I think Riverside might as well. I, don't uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but we will end up with seven road games, seven home games and eight road games. So you can drive yourself nuts. The reality is there's going to be an unequal balance they're, they're doing standings by winning percentage, but there will yes. be an unequal balance, not just in strength of schedule, but where you play. So okay. it is what it is. I, I, it's, so I, at the end of the day, we will have played 15 league games with seven home games and eight road games. And it is what it is. 
You know, I don't, I'm just going to give, this is an opinion on my part, but I think it's very unlikely just because there's a big disparity between the top six and then the bottom teams. I mean, the, several of them have just one win, two have one win, another has three wins. I just think that's not reasonable that you're likely to finish there. Obviously, you, you try to get better and play one game at a time. I like your chances in the two home games, especially when that Stan Sheriff crowd shows up as they have been, like they were against Fullerton. That would be great. Okay, here's a Facebook for you. Uh, this is from Rodney. Just wanted to say thank you for not going Jawan Howard on Russell Turner. Looking forward to this week's game. Well, I, you know, I appreciate that, and I don't think you'll ever see that from from us. I think we're pretty composed and we're pretty professional and respectful, and that's that's how we'll always be. You know, one of the things to, I have to say this: I always get the feeling when you are having words say with Russell Turner that it, you're almost like a parent and he's like the child you're almost it's sort of like you're addressing behaviors you stick to the fact you don't get all over the place I don't I think at the end of the day he probably respects that not that you are particularly caring about how he feels about that no I, I don't have too many comments on that I said after the game that they outplayed us they deserve it uh things that in that regard and how they're handled will be addressed and handled professionally and respectfully, respectfully from this end. Well, end of story. You know, it's just about time. It's 58 minutes past the hour. Let's do this. Let's take the quick time out. When we come back, we're going to look ahead to Cal Poly, Cal State Bakersfield, this week's opponents at the Stan Sheriff Center, kind of explore a little bit about what the challenges each presents. This is called the coach with Iran Ganat on ESPN Honolulu. Some people think of public workers as statistics, numbers, positions that are unnecessary. But public workers include police dispatchers, lifeguards, principals, and other school workers like safety and security specialists and educational assistants, public health nurses, and thousands more real people who play important roles that every community needs. So those public workers, we shouldn't take them for granted. They provide essential services that benefit us all. A message from HGEA. That to-do list you have needs one more thing. Chill. It's an easy thing to do. Just crack open an ice cold Coors Light and chill. Take the afternoon off and binge watch anything. Go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours. Who's counting anyways? Or hang out with just your dog because you've had enough human interaction this week. Whatever you do, do it with a Coors Light. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. 2020 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. Bro, what you doing now? I'm doing my own PV system, and I get homie fall-proof gear. Bro, I don't think bubble wrap is up here going work. Yeah, I get him. Check this out. Okay. Bro, you okay? I think that heat expanding stuff is true. Getting small and hot in here. Oh, no. <laughs> Throw it over here. How we pop water stuff? Hey, hey, poke, poke, poke. Oh, careful. Make sure to have an electrical contractor and licensed electrician do your photovoltaic installations and electrical work. I B E W Local 1186 Lighting your path to the future Here's something new from PAXA, Hawaii's premier technology provider. HPE Electra powers your data from edge to cloud. The HPE data infrastructure is AI-driven, built for cloud, and delivered as a service. The solution provides fast, consistent performance and 99.9999% guaranteed availability. To learn more and to schedule a demo with PAXA, Hawaii's HPE gold partner, go to paxa.com slash Electra. That's paxa.com slash A-L-L-E-T-R-A. Battery bill, battery bill. For cameras, computers, cars, or scooters. For trucks, boats, jet skis, remotes. Battery bill, battery bill. Wheelchairs, special orders, motorcycles, camcorders, rechargers, converters, power inverters. For work, for home, power tools, cell phones. Battery bill, battery bill. 
protect your family with V-Shield, the next generation of hand sanitizers. As a spray or lotion, V-Shield kills the COVID virus on contact, providing four hours of protection. Purchase V-Shield sanitizers at all Hawaiian Financial Federal Credit Union locations, just $13. With every sanitizer purchase, the credit union will donate a travel spray to a frontline hero. Visit HiFiCU.com, federally insured by the NCUA. All sales final, Lobby Shield LLC is solely responsible for the content of this advertisement and is the manufacturer and distributor of this product. Hawaiian Financial Federal Credit Union makes no representations or warranties concerning the effectiveness of this product. This is ESPN Honolulu, KKEA Honolulu, AM 1420 at K224 FR, Honolulu, 92.7 FM. Call the coach on ESPN Honolulu. Welcome back uh, to this this well, virtual edition of Call the Coach. Here is a texter, Aron. Is this the best condition team you've had in your years here? That's a good question. Um, we've had some good condition teams. Can we have a guy when you have five men like Matia runs a four fifty nine mile? It's got to be the That's best I've seen. Yeah, and a guy like Bernardo runs five twenty, and so obviously the mile is one part of conditioning. The we do some basketball uh, testing, we do some mile testing, and then we play games and practices. So this it's hard to answer that because of the the abbreviations and the pauses we've had during the course of the season uh, for guys and getting rhythms. But when healthy, I think this is certainly one of the best I've been around for sure. And I think okay, it's, his- when, when healthy, yeah. you've seen how that can impact our team positively. Sure. Here's another text. It seems mm-hmm. when Noel Coleman brings the ball down, He's slow to get the offense going. The other guards make the first pass to get it going and utilize the shot clock much better. Do you think there's something to that? Well, I just think it's all about reps. I think Javon and Junior have got more reps in a while there, but the the, the ability to have all those guys enter offense at different times, whether it's in transition off a rebound, um, they're all do it in different ways. I mean, and you have to allow them to do it in in different ways, but certainly – we want to have a good push. We've had a better push this year, especially of late, especially when we have all our bodies out there, um, but in different ways. And I think we can continue to challenge Noel to, you know, we've moved him off the ball quite a bit more than Junior and, the, and uh, Javon, uh, but he can play in ball screens. He can get a rebound and initiate offense. And that's a luxury that we want to continue to take advantage of and one that we want to continue to get better at. Noel is such an explosive player and i think russ turner was the one who said it that because they really controlled him in the first half of your game at home and then he said he just wore us down because he is one of those guys that is in good condition he's strong and once he gets it rolling he's a handful yeah he's a lapse killer too i mean in transition if you lose him for a sec he's got a quick trigger um he's got stronger this year we've always talked about his sneaky athleticism people are now starting to see some of that he's long-armed and he's way above the rim on some of those finishes. He's and he's gotten stronger. Um, he is going to continue to make jumps. This is not even close to his full potential. Remember, he's only a half a year last year, and most of this year, obviously, he got hurt for a little stretch sure. into his co- collegiate basketball experience in terms of playing significant minutes. And he's made a big jump. Uh, sometimes you see that and you go, "Oh, he doesn't have much more to go." He has a lot more to go. He's got a chance to be a really special player. And he's got two more years. Yep. That's crazy. All right, Coach, how important is this week to you, especially since it's senior night on Saturday? Also, is there any special thing going on Saturday or Thursday, like the whiteout at the last home game? I think they're announcing some initiatives or have. Um, I know senior night's obviously a big game. Uh, this is a big game for a lot of reasons. It's uh, You always tell them you got a you know, senior week, really. It's senior year, really. We don't just honor our seniors on the day of their senior nights. I know it's a cliche to say, and I say it all the time. You honor them during the course of the year with a performance that reflects what they're about, and they've been tr- huge for us. Um, obviously, it's a big week because we're coming off a tough game, and the games matter quite a bit. And we're uh, looking forward to seeing how our guys respond. I expect them to respond. I've said that every time we've had one of these. We haven't had many, and they've responded every time. And um, it's only it's our last, you know, they talk about the seniors, but it's the last time you could, this team, the 21-22 team, exists one time. Whether the seniors are on it or not, they will be one team uh, one time. And so I know, and you've said it, and a lot of people have been around, they're really tight. So, yeah, I think we should all cherish and enjoy every second 
we get to be, and I know I will, and I know my staff will, and I know the guys will, to be around them, to watch them, to support them, and cheer for them. I, I just think if for anybody, and I am in a very privileged position because I go, I'm with the team on the road. I'm the only non-university employee there. And for, thanks to you, I've been get the access to be able to go to practice and to go to the film sessions. I will keep my phone off. And, and I, you know, there's been a couple of things. And, and I love when you guys go through the opposing personnel. This year, more than any other, I've seen a lot of contributions from the players. They don't just passively listen. They're invited to contribute, and they do. It's, re- it's really quite something. I haven't seen that before. No, it's awesome. I mean, every every angle to gain an edge you need, and, and it's on the floor, it's taking care of your body, it's, it's team chemistry, it's skill, it's film, it's study, and you know we have more technology than ever. The question is, do they take do guys take advantage of it or not? They do. They watch it. They don't just talk with amongst us in our film session. I think they talk a lot amongst themselves. I think they're pretty prepared when they come into the room, and you know we ask them questions, and they're on top of it, and it's – you know, and, and sometimes you'll ask a question, maybe they're not, and you know what's great, the next time they're on it. And um, yeah. they hold each other accountable to that. And uh, really proud of them for that. I think that's a, a real culture trend that they're going to carry on and for the younger group watching them. You know, and I've seen, like, out of a timeout, I saw uh, Javon talking to uh, Jerome about, hey, when, you know, he's describing something, when this happens, let me try to do this. I thought, Well, these are guys that are engaged. I mean, they're not just going out and playing like it's, you know, schoolyard. They they have a plan, and they're trying to execute it. It's helped us improve. It's helped us go through tough times. It's going to help us down the stretch here. Like I said, we believe in our guys. Uh, We expect them to bounce back. Uh, We just got to continue to be hungry to improve during the grind of the season. I know we're traveling a lot. Um, but we got to flip the script and enjoy the, sometimes you got to embrace the struggle. Uh, you got to stay together, um, and you got to fight and stay healthy. And I hope that happens for this group down the stretch. They certainly deserve it. Okay. This is another question. I'm going to replace a word because he's saying is senior night ever used as a recruiting tool because Hawaii senior night is the most special in the nation, in my opinion. Absolutely. And it's the best in the country. I don't think it's even close. I mean, it's such a, uh, um, it's such a testament to the student athletes, to UH, to the athletic department, to our fans, to the state that you can have, you know, so you go kind of rush in and out of it. You can kind of honor it briefly before and people stay after the game. So I think it's awesome for my family, um, for my daughter, my wife to be able to sit and watch our seniors, even though it's very emotional. I mean, it's really tough. Uh, because it hits you. That's why I try to address it in the early part of the week and focus. But when it happens, and and it's it was tough to not have last year's group had a senior night, but not in front of a crowd. Um, well, I know we did the video stuff. The year before, we didn't have a senior night. And so to see that back again um, is really special. Uh, to watch other teams at UH, their senior nights is incredible. Um, there's a lot of – and that's what I like about our group, too. There's guys you can connect with. You've seen these guys grow through their time in our program, uh, on and off the court, you know, in the classroom, like we talk about, and then to shower with shower them with love and the video after the game, the final shot, the lays around the gym. It's absolutely a recruiting tool. It should be a recruiting tool and nobody does it like Hawaii. And so I'm just happy that they will have uh, close to that again. I want to mention that you guys had a couple of players that were selected as first team all big West conference academics. I just thought yeah. you might want to talk about that because I thought it was terrific. Well, I mean, Mate, their highest honors, honors. I mean, there's five or think, and there's a couple right on the cusp. So Mate and Zor were highest honors. And then you had Javon and Bion and I think um, Bernardo, um, but certainly there's other guys and our guys are on pace to earn their degrees. I mean, I could look, I've always said this, I'll say it again, because the group hasn't changed. They continue to, to be guys we really uh, aspire to be and anybody, whatever they choose to do after here, guarantee they'll be successful. Hire them, you know, whatever they choose. They'll, they're just the kind of guys that will work and grind and are very team oriented and are very intelligent. I'm really proud of them. I, I thought this was interesting. I just overheard the byplay. So Jerome came by and he asked, I don't know if it was you or one of the other uh, coaches, but he said, well, 
So grad students don't don't <laughs> figure into this because he, I think, has only A's, as you yeah. might expect from a guy who's graduated from Princeton. But he's like, well, it's sort of saying, what am I, chop liver? Yeah, well, we got like Juan who's got an MBA who's not one of those. Samuta's yeah. right on the cusp. And, you know, um, Kamaka has graduated from Texas in three years with a 3.9. You know, Jerome is the, the transfer from Princeton, and they're not one of the names we've mentioned. That's why I said they're guys who are maybe not eligible from some of that recognition, but they're impressive students. And uh, really, like I said, I know we were very proud of them. Well, I thought it was ter- I just thought everybody cheered for each other when those announcements were made in the film room one morning. I thought it was terrific. Okay, here it is. Uh, someone's uh, sending in another text. Speaking of academics, is it ever possible to get a player that might be going for a doctorate? Well, we had one, if everybody forgets Sai Tamala. Yeah, no, Dr. Sai, and he's, yeah. you know, there's a lot of years after you graduate where to work to residency and things like that. He's been exceptional. I'm so proud that you can have guys who've over, you know, the coaching career that, you know, you know, won an NBA championship, played in the NBA, played professionally, lawyers, doctors. I mean, all that's why I say, like, you know, they, they a lot of guys want to continue to play and they should play as long as they want to. And a lot of guys, like I said, will be very successful playing there. And when and, and if and when they choose to move on from basketball, they'll be successful whenever they choose. And that's a credit to them and their families. And um, what a what a. Again, in, in a place like Hawaii, these guys are incredible, inspirational stories uh, for the youth in Hawaii to look up to. Uh, one of the things I've noticed, and I picked up on this, I wasn't shocked to see Zornet announced, because he is a very curious guy. He's always up on you know, whatever's happening geopolitically. He's up on what's going on in the world. You don't always find that with, with a basketball subset. I find a lot of guys can be tunnel vision, but he is like, he's like a citizen of the world already. No, these guys have, sometimes you see them talk hoops and sometimes you'll hear them talk, you know, world affairs, and like, yeah. you know, all kinds. And, that, and that's the way it should be. Like, these guys are very knowledgeable. They're very intelligent. Um, and like, Zor is a great example of that. Zor is very just straight talented. He's yeah. a gifted communicator. Um, he gets along with everybody and he's not shy. Uh, he's, he's personable, no, he's and I, I think he's another, again, clearly will be very successful whenever he chooses to do it. Well, he was an unbelievable – maybe you can tell the story about this because all of a sudden he was here, and I knew it wasn't on scholarship. He was a walk-on. How did you guys discover him, or who recommended that you give him a chance to play at this level? Well, I remember our staff on the time was on, on top of it, and, and, and we talked about him. Obviously, here's a guy with size who, you know, he just wanted, you know, want to be part of our program. You could tell how much he loves Hawaii and the university. And, you know, so a lot of times he's a local kid and it starts there. Does he fit our, you know, what we're about? Absolutely. He's a hard worker. He's a great kid. He's intelligent. He's about team. Um, he fits every criteria. And, and because of that, and from where he was, as you recall, you know, he was, a, you know, and he'll tell you, he'll be the first to tell you he wasn't a great shooter. He's a really good shooter. He's got a he's great a shape. He's strong. Now, yeah. Uh-huh. He crushes every conditioning test. He, you know, he's a tremendous teammate. He's incredible on the bench. And, you know, I remember getting a text from my brother, you man. He goes, you know, win, lose, time, no time. All I do, all I see on the bench is Zord cheering like crazy. And what a great right. teammate and person to have in your program. And I said, absolutely. Okay. Here's another text on a thread. This is the kind of question you don't like to answer on a thread of one to 10. How much of a threat are the final four teams you're playing in the regular season? Uh, it's tough to rate. I mean, I will say again that every game you can see is the stakes are high. We, right now, we're we got to get healthy, strong for the final stretch, and we're playing a quick turnaround on on, on our last stretch of the season against a Cal Poly team that's added a player. And like I said, we, we were, it was a close game at the half. We played well in the second half and they've added a, uh, a starter on their team. And Bakersfield has, I think everyone in our league will say the record's deceiving because they've had a chance to win almost every game and they've lost three points, two points. We beat them by a possession. Um, yes. So, and it's a, as physical a team as we'll see this year. And that's even coming off an Irvine team that we just saw. So, a lot of physical teams in our league this year. Um, And then we go to Santa Barbara, 
was obviously playing a lot better. They just beat, uh, I think they just beat Long Beach. Long Beach had won 12 in a row, and, and Santa Barbara beat them at their place, double digits. So, and then we go to Northridge, who I could say a lot of those similarities, like the, the close battles. We beat them by seven at our place. They beat Irvine by only five. Uh, they swept one of their road trips recently. They're big inside. Their guards are getting better. Um, so I would say, like it would be every year and for every team in the league, the, the, these games are going to be absolute battles uh, the rest of the way. Well, and I think that's really – would you have it another way? Because I think that gets you tested before you go to the neutral court situation where every team's in the same position. you got to win three in a row. That's why the, all that stuff goes out the window at this point because everybody's trying to build momentum going into the conference tournament. And everybody, because of the rule, obviously, right now is eligible for the conference tournament. So right now, everybody's thinking, okay, hey, I, I, we've, our record is this. We've lost a couple points, gains by a lot, a lot, you know, a lot of gains by single digits right there, one position here there. We're about to make our move. And we had a lot of respect for Bakersfield, like you said earlier, and we played well enough to win at their place. And you can see the battles they've had. So I think most of the coaches in our league, and you've heard it at probably nauseam, that have said there's a lot of parity right now. Um, there's been some years where, you know, I, I know in 16 we had been consistent from start to finish. I know Irvine, I think in 19, both our teams won a game in the NCAA tournament, were consistent from start to finish last year. Santa Barbara was consistent from start to finish, and they had a chance, obviously, to beat their first-round opponent. So right now I see a lot of teams still figuring each other out, but the parity is probably in terms of the separation is, is will be pretty interesting. Well, I'm going to have another text coming up, but i got to take this final time out. We'll be right back on ESPN Honolulu. Here's something new from PAXA, Hawaii's premier technology provider. HPE Electra powers your data from edge to cloud. The HPE data infrastructure is AI-driven, built for cloud, and delivered as a service. The solution provides fast, consistent performance and 99.9999% guaranteed availability. To learn more and to schedule a demo with PAXA, Hawaii's HPE gold partner, go to paxa.com slash Electra. That's paxa.com slash A-L-L-E-T-R-A. Small businesses who switch to Spectrum Business can cut their internet and phone bill in half. Spectrum Business can cut my bill in half? Really? It's true. You're overpaying and we can prove it. Grab your bill and visit Spectrum.com slash business calculator. In just three easy steps, you'll see your savings. Wow, I can save over $1,500 a year. That's real savings. See for yourself. Visit Spectrum.com slash business calculator and make the switch today. Restrictions apply. What should you do with that spare car or truck of yours? Uh, you might have thought about giving it to a friend or family member, but maybe you're not sure if something will go wrong with the car. Hey, why not donate that car to Kidney Cars instead? All you got to do is simply go online to kidneyhi.org. You fill out a quick and easy form so you can get your tax deduction, of course, and the National Kidney Foundation of Hawaii will even pick up that car for free. So donate your kidney car online today at kidneyhi.org. Some people think of public workers as statistics, numbers, positions that are unnecessary. But public workers include police dispatchers, lifeguards, principals, and other school workers like safety and security specialists and educational assistants, public health nurses, and thousands more real people who play important roles that every community needs. So those public workers, we shouldn't take them for granted. They provide essential services that benefit us all. A message from HGEA. Hi, this is Rick from Ruby Tuesday, Hawaii. Come in this month and order any local dish and get the second one for half price. If you haven't tried our hamburger steak plate with two patties, please come in. I think it's the best in town. Wash them down with a Miller Coors Light for only $3.69 or order the award-winning Blue Moon for $4.69. Thanks, see you soon, and make every day a Ruby Tuesday. Two is better than one, especially when it comes to cash back rewards. That's why at Hawaii USA Federal Credit Union, we're doubling what you earn on all your restaurant and transportation purchases the entire month of February when you use your Life Matters Cash Back Visa credit card. And don't forget, you'll always earn 1% cash back on all your other purchases too. To learn more or apply, visit HawaiiUSAFCU.com slash double cash back. Hawaii USA Federal Credit Union. Life Matters. Insured by NCUA and Equal Housing Lender. 
Call the Coach on ESPN Honolulu. Welcome back to our virtual edition of Call the Coach with Rainbow Warrior head coach Iran Ganat. We said we'd get to the text. You ever blame the referees when maybe a few points get away? There are a lot of calls that this fellow thinks were horrible against Irvine. I, I, I don't know about you. I just think if you have, if you're a coach and you're so invested in your team, you're never going to agree with all the calls. It's just the nature of the beast. Yeah, you know, you 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 communicate effectively uh, with the officials you have, and and you watch the game afterwards, and you got to own stuff that you got wrong, and they got to own stuff they got wrong, and we move forward. I mean, I'm not perfect, our staff's not perfect, they're not perfect, but we're not going to sit. I, I don't think you've ever seen since we've been here, or ever will see us blaming the officials. I don't think that's a good message that I want to send to our team. And sometimes I'll tell our team stop whining because over the course of a game, and our guys don't do that very often, but I think the trade-off isn't as the, – the amount of whining we do will take away from us playing effective basketball more than, you know, working for one or two extra calls. Um, that's my job. I'm going to communicate with the officials. I want our guys playing basketball, but I'm not going to compute them. Com- not gonna, we're not going to whine, and we're not going to blame. Uh, we sometimes we'll say we've got to play through, and you have to adjust to the game's officials. If I have something that's significant, and I don't think I do this very often compared to other coaches in the country – um, I will make, I will communicate with who I need to and, and address and go from there. One of the things I hate, and I, you may not, I just think that there are some crews that feel the need. It's like if they haven't gone to the monitor by 10 minutes left in the second half, they, they feel like they have to. It's almost like, well, we can't get, we're not going to get paid if we don't go to the monitor. That monitor especially when it goes over two minutes it completely disrupts the flow of the game yeah and obviously in the in the games they they want to make sure you can always review some things and sometimes you can ask for some reviews i mean it's good when when the the crew comes sometimes can talk amongst each other and say very clearly this doesn't need to be reviewed if there is yeah. ever obviously in situations and it's very 50 50 in a close game you got to get it right um but i know they're that talking i yeah, there's been talk, and even over the last couple of years, they've tried to, you know, improve the flow of the game. And, and like you said, sometimes you can't. I, I don't know why at times, and they can explain, when they do look at the at the feed, it needs to take so long. When they do look at the feed, they just got to, you know, okay, we got this much time to make a call based on the video and go from there. So, you know, sometimes some of them on the is tough angles, and I know they're big calls. So overall, I think it's slightly improved, and I know it's a focus area moving forward. Okay, this is an interesting question and because you guys are, are actually quite high on your made basket to assist ratio. But it says, Coach, is there a philosophy where there needs to try to be an assist on every basket? I just noticed that a lot of uh, baskets have assists attached to them. Others don't. What's your thought on that? Well, overall, we're a share of the ball program. I think we've always been one of the better programs nationally. I, I think we're solid this year. We were really tough out of the gate. Guys got more comfortable with, with each other. But we're back to sharing the ball. I think we kind of have a we share, you don't kind of mantra. And we're one of the better teams, I think, over the years at sharing the ball. And we've been one of the top five or ten teams uh, nationally over the years and not giving up assists. Um, you know, there's a balance there because there are times when guys need to make plays on both ends and you don't get many assists for those. And, and so you got to have a balance between being a team that really shares the ball, plays inside out, moves the ball, and also a team that in certain situations can go to some guys to get a bucket for you in, in key stretches. Two to one seems like it's sort of like where you guys generally are at. So yeah, for you know, every, yeah, if you're like 55, 60 percent, uh, you're you're good. That's um, and so over the years, we've had t- some teams that have been in the top 30, top 40. Uh, we weren't great the first couple of weeks or first three weeks of the season. Uh, I think yeah. we've had a good stretch since then. And then as you get to the end of the year, I think everywhere nationally, it gets harder because of the execution and teams knowing you so well. So but at the end of the day, you got to have a balance between you always have to share the ball. It's, it's an art. It's a, ga- a great game. It wears down the defense inside out. And you have to have key playmakers late in situations and in key stretches that you might not be able to get an assist. I got about a minute here, but this next text I want to get in. Is a trip to Australia in the future for this team to play some games? 
You know, absolutely. I mean, when we, there's certain things we've tried to check off since we got here, you know, Hey, new, new practice gym, new locker room, new conference room, you know, you know, bringing in the tip off of that. Here comes our coaches, there's cancer event. And so we don't have many in terms of, you know, but, and then take a foreign tour every four years. I mean, at one point, everybody's taking a foreign tour every four years and Hawaii does it every 10, 12, 15. We're not doing that. We're actually, I was built for the, this summer. Um, we went to Australia in 18, um, but it's really hard to use one of those at a time when you might have some restrictions in some countries and sure. you don't want you want to take full advantage. So we're planning to get ahead of it for uh, 2023. Australia is certainly one of the options. You know, we've talked about some other countries and, and, and I'm really looking forward to taking our team on a tour and um, enjoying that experience. A run flat out of time. The hour always flies. Thanks so much. Good luck this week. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me as always. We look forward to seeing everybody. So I got, I got, thanks everybody for watching virtually. I understand we're going to be in person and I can't wait to see the familiar faces again. That will do it for Ron Ganat from all of us at ESPN Honolulu. I'm Bobby Curran. Aloha. This has been Call the Coach on ESPN Honolulu, presented by PAXA, Coors Light, and Ruby Tuesday Hawaii, and brought to you by HGEA, Hawaiian Financial Federal Credit Union, and IBEW Local 1186. Some people think of public workers as statistics, numbers, positions that are unnecessary. But public workers include police dispatchers, lifeguards, principals, and other school workers like safety and security specialists and educational assistants, public health nurses, and thousands more real people who play important roles that every community needs. So those public workers, we shouldn't take them for granted. They provide essential services that benefit us all. A message from HGEA. Protect your family with V-Shield, the next generation of hand sanitizers. As a sprayer lotion, V-Shield kills the COVID virus on contact, providing four hours of protection. Purchase V-Shield sanitizers at all Hawaiian Financial Federal Credit Union locations, just $13. With every sanitizer purchase, the credit union will donate a travel spray to a frontline hero. Visit HiFiCU.com, federally insured by the NCUA. All sales final, Nova Shield LLC is solely responsible for the content of this advertisement and is the manufacturer and distributor of this product. Hawaiian Financial Federal Credit Union makes no representations or warranties concerning the effectiveness of this product. Get ready for Woodcraft Hawaii's biggest sale of the spring. That's right, Woodcraft's March Mania sale happens March 14th through the 21st. Score big savings on your favorite brands, including DeWalt, Milwaukee, Makita, Bosch, Jet, Occidental, Laguna, and many more. Enter their Match Mania prize drawing and receive a free gift just for mentioning ESPN Honolulu. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram for even more money-saving deals. Woodcraft Hawaii's March Mania sale is a slam dunk. Rivals Sports Bar and Lounge is your home for the ultimate sports viewing experience. Enjoy all the sports up close and in style. Enjoy March Madness with the best wings in town. Watch the NBA with a slice of Waikiki pizza. Then wash it down with an ice cold seltzer or local brew. Rivals has one of Oahu's most extensive whiskey collections too. For every sport, for every game, for everyone. Rivals Sports Bar and Lounge in the Waikiki Malia by Outrigger. That to-do list you have needs one more thing. Chill. It's an easy thing to do. Just crack open an ice-cold Coors Light and chill. Take the afternoon off and binge watch anything. Go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours. Who's counting anyways? Or hang out with just your dog because you've had enough human interaction this week. Whatever you do, do it with a Coors Light. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. 2020 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. Here's something new from PAXA, Hawaii's premier technology provider. HPE Electra powers your data from edge to cloud. The HPE data infrastructure is AI-driven, built for cloud, and delivered as a service. The solution provides fast, consistent performance and 99.9999% guaranteed availability. To learn more and to schedule a demo with PAXA, Hawaii's HPE Gold Partner, go to paxa.com slash Electra. That's paxa.com slash A-L-L-E-T-R-A. This is ESPN Honolulu, KKEA Honolulu, AM 1420 at K224 FR, Honolulu 